everyone, I'm Jessica Posner. I'm the co-founder of Shining Hope for Communities. We run the first tuition-free school for girls in Kibera, which is Africa's largest slum, and also run desperately needed community services. I think what is so important as you do this type of work is to always be learning. And to do that, you really need someone who is the guide for your project. They're a local innovator, a local leader, who really understands the complexities and the challenges that you're tackling in a way that it's really difficult to understand if you've grown up here in the United States. One of the most important things I've learned is that there is no one way to do things and to do things right. And oftentimes, I'll go into a situation and I'll really think I have this like great idea or I have this way to do something, and then I'll talk to Kennedy, my co-founder, I'll talk to other people on the ground and realize that there's actually a way that is so much better than what I had thought about going in because I had sort of come in with a really American viewpoint and had an idea that would work great here in the US. But when you implement in Kibera, it just doesn't translate. So there's absolutely a lot of ideas that we're sort of raised with that just are not effective in a place like Kibera. And so having someone who can honestly tell you, no, like, okay, you can try, that's not gonna work. And being able to hear that, you really need, you want people to tell you that it's not going to work because then you can really find a way that it will. You need to find mentors and advisors who you can get to help you. There are so many complexities to the legal and financial setups and so we have been so lucky to get a lawyer to sort of take us on as a full-time pro bono client to find accountants, to find people who really understand the setup of how things work both here in the United States and how things work in the country that you're working in. So you want to get a 501c3 nonprofit status in the United States. You also at the same time need to be careful that you're not violating any laws of the country in which you're working. So you also need to find out how are their tax structures set up because you want to be able to accept donations in that country as well. So our organization has CBO status in Kenya, which is a community-based organization, sort of a smaller version of NGO status, and also 501c3 status in the United States. And then between that, you sort of have to figure out, these are two corporations, effectively, so how do they work together? What is the integration between them? And to do that, you need a lawyer, you need an accountant, you're going to have to have a foreign bank account. There's miles and miles of paperwork that you need to make sure that you're filling out. So I often think a lot sort of about all of the ways that I've been brought up that I've sort of been taught to sort of think like things move really fast or like there's there's like a way to do something that is right. And then the, one of the biggest things I've learned by working in Kenya is that there's a whole different set of parameters under which the society functions and they're different from my own but they're not better or worse. They're, they're just different. And sort of be, being able to be flexible. Where I think we're also as millennials raised to sort of think that we are like the most effective people ever. We can just go in and we can do it ourselves without would be great and I think that's just that's not gonna work in a situation like that and that's actually not the point because the point of setting up an international organization is to really empower local people to solve their own issues and to play a role in, in, in that process uh, another really important thing is if you're serious about this you need to ask yourself do I speak the language I work really really hard to become fluent in Swahili and that is, plays such an important role in my work. So investing the time to sort of put the structures in place that support your work, like learning a language, like living in the country for a, a long time before sort of launching something is important. I guess now I've been told to say something in Swahili, so I'm gonna say thank you for listening and now go and do something. So asante ni sana, na shukuru, na enda kufanya kitu.